Hi everyone, welcome back to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. Guys, it's such a pleasure to come to you week after week, every Saturday at 7.30 exclusively on YouTube, here for season three of course. So guys, let me start out. I hope you have subscribed and have clicked that notification bell and that you're, you're binge watching for starters and that you're having so much fun. You're being blessed, you're being ministered to, you're liking, you're commenting, and of course that you are sharing. Now guys, here on Uniquely Me, we talk with women who have been through trauma, women who have been to the, 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 the uttermost, some persons say the guttermost, and have come up on top. My next guest is going to be sharing her life. And let me tell you something, she has a story. She has a, a testimony for want of a better word. But she's known as tough talking. She will tell you that she had to live with the fact that her dad was known as the notorious, and I won't say the name just yet, you will hear. And then, as if it couldn't get any worse, October 2010, Oh my God, who could ever forget, but I'll allow her to tell you all about it. I want you to stay tuned and come right back because I've got an exciting episode for you. Uniquely me is uniquely you. Balancing the different hats of life. Achieving all your goals in the name of Christ. Uniquely me is uniquely you. On your chest, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. You are a winner, and you're an overcomer. You can be all things through Christ who gives you strength. Yeah. So, Auntie Sandy, and that's how I'm starting out. Right. <laughs> Welcome to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. Thanks much. It's such a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. And I'm starting out with Auntie Sandy because Everybody knows you as Auntie Sandy. That's right. <laughs> but you're, well, I need you to help me to understand which name should I be using because I have Camille Coke and I have Sandy Brown. Which one is it? Auntie Camille. <laughs> Auntie Camille. <laughs> Auntie, Auntie Camille. Camille. Yes. But, but what's, it, what's, what's, what, what's with the two names? Uh, Sandy Brown is the name before I was born again. And... Mm -hmm. The brown came in because persons would say, as a female, you're so rough and hardcore, mm -hmm. which my dad name is Jim Brown. So mm -hmm. they just had the Sandy Brown. Mm -hmm. Because most people honestly don't know that our name is Coke, not oh. Brown. Oh. You understand? Mm -hmm. So um, they would call me Sandy Brown, but mm -hmm. that's originally, people know me as Sandy Brown. brown. Okay. It's just since born again, mm -hmm. and I've used my name Camille, yeah. Auntie Camille. Persons really know that I'm um, Auntie Camille. Camille, Camille, yes. Camille Coke. Right, right, right. So right out the back, because we just want to, well, I think I'm going to leave the suspense, because some persons looking, they're trying to see, is that the Camille? Is that the Camille? So we'll just leave them in suspense a little right. bit more. I want you to share with us life growing up, because you must have had an exciting life, I'm thinking. Yes, I've had a real <laughs> excited life, because... We grew up very much as a happy family. Yeah. So, you know, life, all right, then I have a bigger sister. My mother has five children mm -hmm. from my dad, which he has outside children. Yeah. But um, my bigger sister, she left and she went overseas to college. So, you know, it's me and my brothers. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But um, basically, as the only girl, you know, you cling to the boys. Yeah. So I guess that's where the roughness started from because it was just, you know, as, as, as a little girl growing up, mm -hmm. to, to be where the boys at, you just have to be rough like them. You have, can ride the bicycle like them. Mm -hmm. You have to cope with their pace. Yeah. So, you know, even though um, my cousins were there, which me and them is the same age group, my brother was much smaller. I had a bigger brother. Mm -hmm. um, he usually tell my mother, I said, Mommy, you see, if she was a little boy, I don't <laughs> know how you'd manage a car. She needs to tone down, you know, but, you know <laughs> mm -hmm. to keep up the pace with them. Yeah. I had to be rough yeah. to keep up the pace with them. So basically, mm -hmm. but growing with my siblings and my family was super great. I can imagine. Super great. So your dad was Jim Brown. Yes. And I guess everybody knew him as Jim Brown. Well, the, the tr when you look in within the media, Jim Brown was one of those notorious persons. Yes. 
How did you, when did you know that your dad was known to be notorious and I think he was one of Jamaica's most wanted? Yes. How did you deal with that? Um, well, all right, basically, let me tell you something. Separate apart from the life that they say about daddy, mm -hmm. daddy at home was always daddy. Yeah. So it's like the Jim Brown is when you go out, mm -hmm. you hear about that side of daddy. But at home, daddy is just a family person, just daddy. Yeah. yeah very principal, mm -hmm. very, very principal, mm -hmm. very stern person. But his life outside, yes, we knew it, yeah. but he never take it home to us. It's most yeah. like when we would like um, go downtown, you know, with people that say, boy, your father this or your father that, or the media, like if anything come up, mm -hmm. you'd see the big writing up in the media and um, so forth. But he has always taught us mm -hmm. never to be ashamed of the family lineage that you come from because ah. he always teach me this. Mm -hmm. You did not choose mm -hmm. which family to be born in. Mm -hmm. That comes straight from God. Yeah. So it's nothing to feel embarrassed about. about. Wow. So it, as, as younger siblings, sometimes people really pass some harsh one, mm -hmm. you know, drop some real hard word, your father, murderer, even going to school. Mm -hmm. We had that challenge that we and persons catch up over it because People like your father, murderer, your father, killer, this, that, that. But mm -hmm. I've always executed, like, you don't know nothing about my father because mm -hmm. even though you talk, the life that you started to live, mm -hmm. you wonder. Yeah. Jim Brown pitting them, yeah? Mm -hmm. People is like, them pitting me full of manners, them pitting me full of etiquette, them just different because he taught us well. Yeah, yeah. He and mommy did a great job with that. Awesome. Were they married? Um, no, no. I don't know if you, by chance, did you, being the girl, did you ever get a chance to see your mom? How did she deal with that? I just want to pull her in a little. How did she deal with the, the you know, oh. all of what persons had to say and that kind of thing? I, I can tell you that my mother did a great job. Yeah. A very, very great job with, with being with the man Jim Brown, mm -hmm. dealing with it family life, yeah. dealing with children mm -hmm. and all of that. She did it great. She really did it great because she stood with us. Yeah. She taught us. Um, she was the mother that keep putting in our ears, listen, keep positive no matter what people say. Yeah. Just keep positive. Remember yeah. now, Sandy, Leighton, you have to you have to come out. Yeah. You have to do what you have to do. But don't listen to what the people say. People is here to just tear us down, but Listen to me. You see, the life that you live, yeah. it speaks for you. Oh. Don't argue with people. Don't go there and fight with them over your father's situation. Your mm -hmm. father's life, let him deal with that. Yeah. Chef always taught us that. That's so amazing. And I'm sure many listening don't know that side. No, 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 no. And, and, you know, it's funny because the media portrays one side of us and they leave out the other side, but there's a, we are a whole human being. Uh, the media over the years have learned the stigma. Yeah. And I've grown past that because it's like, don't care what good you do. Yeah. Just because of who your family lineage is, mm -hmm. they use that. Yeah. It's one of the first things always to come up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jim Brown this, Jim Brown that, you know? So yeah. um, we have learned, even though people sometimes you have been pushed away. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you have been spoken down to because mm -hmm. of the family lineage. People speak about you in such a way. But um, as I tell you, the teaching that we have received was extremely great. Yeah. Um, it's like we were prepared. Yeah. We were prepared from a younger age mm -hmm. to deal with criticism. Yeah. Yeah. Th that's one of the things that I know my mother really prepare us for because the tear down the wall critics yeah she's always like telling us listen mm -hmm. words yeah words are powerful yes but don't let it break you ah don't wow. let it break you she always that tell us don't let it break you just keep focus mm -hmm. do what you have to do don't argue about your father thing let your father deal with his thing yeah you know but um jamaica is always stigmatized even now yeah yeah it is even now it is do you remember any particular incident that you had to deal with that probably really broke you? Um, I remember 
going to Arden one one morning, Monday morning, we had devotion, but um, over the weekend, my father came out mm -hmm. in the paper as wanted mm -hmm. was to turn itself in. Yeah. And while in devotion, you have a little girl that she, she took the, the star to school. Mm -hmm. She carried it to school. Yeah. And, you know, she was just there, like, running it in the devotion line. And I sat there. I stand there and I watch her doing it. So it's like, everybody's like, you become the center of attraction. I became embarrassed that morning because mm -hmm. it's not really what you want to see of your dad, but yeah. it's how she came about it. Everybody was looking about, looking around, and her father visited, you know? So mm -hmm. after devotion, now I went to her, so I said, what are you doing that for him? Mm -hmm. so, you know, she started to like bully me up, so we catch up in a fight. Mm, you beat her. Yeah, <laughs> beat her up badly because, mm -hmm. you know, we catch up in a fight. I went to the office. When I went to the office, like, they gave me a suspension. Mm -hmm. Anyway, upon that, I found my father. I went straight down by Tivoli to my father and I said yeah. to him, Dad, I got suspended. Mm -hmm. And he asked why. So when I tell him, he said, Sandy, mm -hmm. talk to you about it already and you're still. I said, Daddy, she carried the paper to school and she was yeah. just like showing everybody like she was Jeremy. He said, well, so they suspend me and they said, oh, long so I, I think I got about five days suspension. I was to take my period. Mm -hmm. So he was telling mommy that, you know what? I want to go up there because I also want to meet this child and mm -hmm. I want to meet the child parent mm -hmm. because I don't think people really, so mommy, I said, Jim, you nobody go, man. Anyway, in person, he came. Mm -hmm. He met with the a guidance counselor and he met with the little girl yeah. and her mother was there and her mother was telling her that she's rude, mm -hmm. you know, and tell her that things like these, if you have your friend, you try to embrace your friend, you don't try. Her mother was pretty well nice. She mm -hmm. became my best friend. Yeah. <laughs> she became my best friend because her mother really rocks her up and tell her that she was very rude. Yeah. She shouldn't have taken the paper out of the house mm -hmm. because her mother star and she decided to carry it from her school. school. Come make trouble. Because <laughs> she won't bring me down. <laughs> right? Yes. <laughs> but somewhere in there, as you grew up, Sandy, you, well, based on the growing up, right? Your dad, then your brothers, somewhere in there, it made you tough. I, um, as I told you, became the only girl. Mm -hmm. Yes, I became tough, mm -hmm. very rough. Yeah. That um, person started to say, boy, a dandy son, rougher than our brother, the man. I, I became very rough, mm -hmm. very hard. Mm -hmm. And um, somehow it's like it attracted me being forming my own gang. Yeah my own friends, mm -hmm. my own alliance. Yes. And um, in my early teens, you'd see me like, with most of men, when you see me alone as female, you would see all 20 men around me. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I became very tough, very mm -hmm. hard, hardcore, mm -hmm. and I operated with my own thing. Mm -hmm. I did my own thing. Yeah. Even though my brothers were there, mm -hmm. I run my own thing. So is it okay to say that you were a little done, or done it in your own right? Um, basically, yes. Yeah. Yes, because um, I did my own thing. Mm -hmm. I operated with my own friends. We do our own stuff, you understand? Yeah. Um, persons usually say, it, um, yeah, I'm a done, yeah, I'm a this, yeah, I'm a that. You mm -hmm. understand? Oh, yes, they usually say it. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. So your brothers, um, they too have been out in the media like daddy. Yes. Because not many persons, everybody, the truth is everybody knows you as Dodo's sister as well. Yes. But your brothers more so would have been out there. How did that impact you? Um, well, as I tell you, I was just doing my own world. Yeah. But it, it drew a lot of attention because knowing who you are related to, boy, a Dodo's sister that, you know, mm -hmm. a liberty sister that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um... It had a great impact that persons would look up to you as so. Yeah. yeah. Really look up to you. Mm -hmm. Because with the old settings and everything, mm -hmm. knowing you'd say them is one big empire. Would you do you think persons were looking up out of fear? Um, 
of course, persons look up out of fear because, to be honest, um, remember now some of some of, so so some of the things that went on. Yeah. Um, some injustice went on. Yeah. What you know that people will we are human and mm -hmm. people will get be feared. Yeah. People will get afraid and all of that. You understand? Mm -hmm. So you know, um, oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. Yes, it's a very intense um, but exciting interview that we're having. Um, Camille Coke is on set. Some people know as Sandy Brown, tough yes. talking Sandy, you know, <laughs> Dudu's sister, Liberty sister, Jim Brown daughter. Yeah, man, she's the same one in Living Colors. And she's sharing, you know, what life was like growing up then. And so, um, I'm just so excited to talk with her to <laughs> understand who she is. So, Camille, let me tell you, I'm from Montego Bay. Right. When I came to Kingston to live, because I came to Kingston out of coming to Bible school, but when I came to Kingston, you hear the name, you hear the Liberty name, you hear the Dudus name, you hear the Tivoli, you know, for going right. and kind of something there. So, you, you kind of, even though you weren't necessarily in the areas, you were afraid. There was something about coming to Kingston that made you a little bit timid coming from the country, and I came here without no family, never been here before, there was fear coming up. And so the persons, so it was said now that it's, it's, I'll just say it's an empire. It's an empire. In that empire, your role? Um, well, as a basically, I tell you, as a female, I did my own thing. Yeah. Doing, doing my own thing was just me and my friends. Yeah. You understand? We operated our own thing. Mm -hmm. um, when, when, when people refer to West Kingston, they would say, like, is the court them place, you know, whatever, whatever. But mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, there's a lot more joy behind it. Yeah. It's not just what you see with your natural eyes. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because we are still a loving set of person. Mm -hmm. Um, we execute a lot of love, we try to help, mm -hmm. we always there try to assist, just being there trying to do something, even for the youths. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we always try to encourage youths, listen, it's more than what you just see with the natural eye. Yeah. Because, you know, as I tell you, persons just stigmatize Tivoli with one thing, I'll be a bad man down there, I'll be a this. We try to encourage youths, go to school, get an education. Mm -hmm. For those who you can help and fund to school, for them to get an education. Yeah. We do a lot of that. Yeah. A yeah. lot of that is done. But you know, that's but not what you're spoken about. Ah. Because you have persons that right now are in some high ranking place working. Mm -hmm. And they can tell you that, listen, do they send them to school? Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. You have a, a gentleman that was going to a pilot school. Mm -hmm. He helped him to go to that school, yeah. you know, but it never yet spoken about. It's never spoken about. No, 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 no. It's, it's the fear, as I said, that I keep, because that's usually what you hear in the media. This is my last question for this section. What, what was it that made people fear you guys? Um, I, I think the fear came in after all Jim Brown. Yeah. Just, just hearing... The, the, the relationship and knowing who people said Jim Brown was. Mm -hmm. You understand? And we, you know, all right. I, I would say was and who people said because as I tell you, mm -hmm. dad at home is dad. Yeah. Outside of home yeah. is what they say. Did he ever confess? No, like saying that he does. does mm -hmm. No, he doesn't speak to us about that life. Wow. <laughs> A dad at home is dad. Has any of your brothers taken over from that meaning, carry the same personality like that? Uh, we all are family people. Mm -hmm. When we are at home, we are at home. We mm -hmm. live a family, straight life. We just deal with our kids. Just deal like a normal life, you understand? Yeah. So it, it, it's like basically, when you go outside, it's something different. But yeah. at home, you are dad. Some persons say that in the garrison community the people the people are held captive or under fear with the use of kindness would you agree so they say the people are poor and they're kept poor so that their minds are enslaved and so you have these um you have these persons and so it was said of your brother as well that are or the family at large that 
the people are kept in poverty and you guys are able to control them. Would you, would you agree with such a statement? No, I wouldn't agree because we encourage mm -hmm. do businesses, yeah. educate yourself. Mm -hmm. Education is the only way out of poverty. Yeah. Mm. So if we encourage that, yeah. and we tell you, if you see a youth, because in my community, I work with a lot of unattached youth, you know. Yeah. A lot of unattached youth. Mm -hmm. And those because, are unattached ones without families? No, unattached are those that stop going to school early. Oh. They, they, they linger, they want to get involved, they want to go on corners. Yes. So therefore, what you do, you encourage those. You, you try to get them in some art program. Yes. You try to get them to learn some trades. Yeah. So if it is that, then if we want to have them bound in poverty, mm -hmm. it's something that we wouldn't have done. But we mm -hmm. have made them know, so listen to me, life is more than sitting on the corner. Yeah. Life is more than rubbing out your hand. Mm -hmm. So here mm -hmm. we go on. It's a market there. Yeah. You want a business? Mm -hmm. Oh, there we find out how much you have a bag of onion and how much you have a bag of peas. Mm -hmm. And we will assist you. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. Go back to school. We encourage them to go back to school. Even young girls that have baby, yeah. go back and learn a trade. Yeah. I, 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 I myself get a lot of young girls inside of the, um, the school on Oak Road. Oh, that's the one when they get pregnant? When they get mm. pregnant. I encourage them. I say, go back to school. Even though you're pregnant, yeah. take the shame, man. Just go on to school. Nobody mm. even look at what's happening. Yeah. You understand? So it's like, I would not agree to that statement. Yeah. I couldn't have. Yeah. So we're at October 20, 2010. It's me. It's, it's, oh, it's me. It's okay. Me. I, it's, I think because I got my information from the Glee now, right? So I'm glad for the clarity. The day is here. I don't remember what led up to the day, but the day is here. It's a, it's a, because I remember I was out in St. Thomas and I remember I was told that we need to hurry and get back into Kingston. Mm -hmm. And it was as if the entire country was shut down. Well, it was shut down. And there is mayhem all over. Your brother is being looked for, um, and holy heap things are going which led to you being um, hauled off to jail. What, recall the day for us. What were you thinking? What was going through your mind? What were you doing? What was the family doing? Well, you're talking about incursion, right? The incursion, right. yes. All right, then. Um, I was at home with mommy. Yeah. And um, from, from in 2009, mm -hmm. I don't know, something just kept pricking my heart. I just felt burdened. For 2009, my birthday, I just mm -hmm. felt this burden. I don't know where the burden come from, mm -hmm. but I just keep telling mommy, something bad is about to happen. Yeah. But I couldn't put my hand on it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I couldn't even explain it to her, but I was telling her. So at this time when everything was happening, I was just at home. Yeah. Everything was just crazy. Mm -hmm. Mommy was just praying, mm -hmm. even, me who I, I said I couldn't pray then. Mm -hmm. We were just praying. We were just giving God thanks. So your mom is a Christian. Like yeah, my mom is a Christian. Okay. My mom is a Christian. Mm -hmm. And um, everything was super crazy. Yeah. When I said crazy, I had sleepless nights. Mm -hmm. I had some terrible headache. Mm -hmm. And that know. is without you knowing anything. You just it's just your body just responding. Just your body to something responding. in the atmosphere. Yes. Just mm -hmm. your body responding. So basically. It, it was crazy. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. It was mad. Yeah. It's something that no one would want to experience ever again in life. Yeah. It, you don't want that moment yeah. to ever even return. Share with us if you don't mind. What was that moment like uh, for you? It, 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 it was just chaos. Mm -hmm. It was just crazy. Phone calls just coming in. Your brother dead. I heard that your brother died. Mm -hmm. um, I hear that the two of them died. Person just calling, telling you, oh, who dead? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This dead, that dead, that dead, that dead. Yeah. And most of the person that died yeah. are persons that I had a vision in 2009 that I was running on bare dead bodies. Oh my God. And these are all the persons that I was getting phone call that night. Yeah. Um, and at this point, you, were you a Christian, Camille? No, I was never a Christian. Daddy, when I use a prophetic for you, man. I was <laughs> never a Christian at that time. Mm -hmm. But I knew that God was calling me. Yeah. My party life was 
cramp in 2009. Mm -hmm. And I know that I got the Holy Spirit just convicted me then and I didn't know what it was because party, I didn't want to go no more. Mm -hmm. I pressed the clothes, I'd the ear and I go inside and I lay down and them come and them knock on the door and tell my boyfriend don't answer. Yeah. I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But not knowing that I was just about to transform in my calling. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was about to happen, but yeah. it happened big. And um, when I got the call that my brother died, mm -hmm. you know, something just hit me. And yeah. I was saying, my brother, mm -hmm. oh, never tell my mother, say my brother dead. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. this is my only brother. Mm -hmm. This is this From is my Dudu's. mother, no. Dodos is my half brother. Okay, okay. He's my father outside child, but we grow together. Mm -hmm. This is liberty. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't know, <laughs> I don't know. As I tell you, the, the whole world was just running crazy. Yeah. My phone was just ringing off, ringing off, ringing off, ringing off. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I left home mm -hmm. and I tried to reach, in, to reach back in town. Mm -hmm. when, I, when, I, when I tried to reach back, it was just beer madness. Yeah. Just crazy stuff happening. Mm -hmm. But I give God all the glory. Yeah. Made it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm here. So you made it. How is it that you ended up in jail? Um, as 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 you know, person of interest. Mm -hmm. Person of interest came because your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. The lifestyle that you live. Mm -hmm. Because as I tell you, my life was no easy ball. I was no walkover. Yeah. I was no boom over. I wasn't, I, I was tough. Yeah. So therefore, when everything got settled and they put out my name and my brother's name, mm -hmm. when I went in and, you know, and I did a couple interview, I thought I would come back home. Mm -hmm. But in the interview, I realized that this policeman was onto my lifestyle. Yeah. So they knew more than even what I thought they knew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, 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 um, they bluntly told me, they said that we are not going to release him. Mm -hmm. Because what we have torn apart in Tivoli Garden, mm -hmm. you can go back and put it right back together. Mm -hmm. So we are not going to release it. So I was saying to the policeman, I'm a female. Mm -hmm. He said, no. Mm -hmm. You're coming like the man them. <laughs> so I was like, officer, I'm a female. So it's like right there something hit me. Yeah. And I realized that the life that I'm living mm -hmm. and thinking that I am a female, it is armed and dangerous because mm -hmm. it's like just living it because of who you are but not realizing behind it the danger. Yeah, yeah. What could have happened? Because I could have died. Yeah. I could have died. Why you say that? Is it something you want to share? Yes, I could have died because um, after everything happened and I went back into Tivoli mm -hmm. and I went to check on my, 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 my brother's mother, mm -hmm. what was taking place. Mm -hmm. And while coming out back through the, the checkpoint, mm -hmm. I saw a soldier man with my picture. Mm -hmm. And he was saying to the young lady that I was walking with, you know that girl? Mm -hmm. So when I look over and I saw that picture, mm -hmm. I took away myself. Mm. Because I heard him telling her, if me ever hold a girl, I'm kill her now. So he never see you? No. Mm. Because at that time, the stress and everything, I usually bleach out white, white, white. You serious? Yeah, man, the stress and everything within four days, I just get black. Yeah. It's like my whole body. It would be like it got poisoned. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, it's like everything took a 360 right there when I hear him say so. Mm -hmm. And then when I became a person of interest, I know say, eh, eh. Yeah. My life where me I live is not a normal life. It's a life that you didn't have to know me today. You yeah. could just hear that. You were. I was. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But um, when I went in, I was at Dwayne Park. Mm -hmm. Doing the park is my penina. Yeah. Mm. Doing the park is my penina. Mm -hmm. Doing the park. 
Oh God. I'm well, gonna let you stick up in there because we're going to we're gonna wrap this and we're gonna come back. Guys, I know you are sitting there on the edge of your seat like me. You you would have noticed that I keep turning because this woman's testimony, this woman's story, it's not just it's not just about somebody who was popular in Jamaica. This is how God would have done some stuff, dig up, root up, as if you're noticing to bring this woman to a place which we're going to learn about uh, when we come back. So stay tuned and it's going to get hot in here. And let none of you devise or even imagine evil in your heart against another. And do not love lying or have truth. For all these things I hate, declares the Lord. Zechariah 8 verse 17. We have a responsibility to live a wholesome and perfect life. Yes, if God says, I hate lies and hatred and malice and keeping um, and keeping and keeping scores with others and murderers and all things bad and we we desist from those things wouldn't our lives be far more fulfilling so he commands live well be at peace with your neighbors not just those who live beside you Avoid wicked imaginations against others. Refrain from telling lies. For these things displease me, says God. We are all guilty of these things. But let us repent and commit to honoring God. Blessings. Who am I really? Choices, choices, choices. In pursuit of a career? OMG, I'm a wife. Help, I am a mother. Oh, I'm in church. When do I get to be a woman that God called me to be? Uniquely Me covers the acrobatic endeavors of every woman to balance the responsibilities of being a mother, a wife, a professional, a church leader, a friend, yet still maintain her identity. I too am a mother, a wife, a trained minister of religion, a banker, an entrepreneur trying to balance the many hats that signifies my role. My book will help motivate and empower every woman who is really unique in her own way. Grab your copy today on Amazon because Uniquely Me is Uniquely You. Thank you for tuning in to Uniquely Me with Simone Stewart. Remember, Uniquely Me is Uniquely You. Thank you.